Hello everyone. So continuing on with our gas law discussion, I thought we should talk about a practical example, one which hopefully you've never encountered, and that is the reaction involved in inflating an airbag in your car during an accident. Now, uh, this is a few th practical things about this. One, um, if you're going to inflate an airbag, we want a reaction that happens very, very quickly. Um, this happens in about uh, two or three one hundredths of a second. And second, we want a reaction that's going to give us a lot of gas, because the volume of an airbag has to be has to be rather rather significant. So um, this is the reaction that's very commonly found in them. This is sodium azide NaN3. Uh, when it's heated up a little bit to about three hundred degrees C, it generates sodium metal and nitrogen gas in a, in a three to two ratio from sodium azide to, to nitrogen. So good, uh, the sodium metal actually goes through a second reaction which makes us a little bit more complex but we're not gonna discuss that for the moment. But um, what happens is there's a detector in the bumper of your car and it sets off an igniter within this airbag uh, detonator, shall we say. Um, heats up sodium azide, then sodium azide detonates. It is an explosive, although nobody wants to say that very much. Um, and then that explosion, the amount of gas generated, fills the bag up very quickly and, generally speaking, stops you from having an injury um, through some physical trickery we'll talk about as we go along. So, here's a representative example. We have a 36 liter airbag. We have a desired pressure for nitrogen gas. We have a temperature. So how much sodium azide do we actually need to do it? So our process is gonna go first, working out the number of moles of nitrogen gas using PV equals NRT. Then going from that to moles of sodium azide using the stoichiometry from this balanced equation. Then going from that using the molar mass of sodium azide to the mass of it we need in our actual uh, airbag, to, airbag device to fill it up. So here we go. Relatively straightforward. The only thing that wasn't straightforward is that I didn't mention already was that this temperature needs to be in Kelvin. You might as well go ahead and just have an infinite loop of me saying that. The temperature has to be in Kelvin. The temperature has to be in Kelvin. It has to be in Kelvin. It has to be in Kelvin. It has to be in Kelvin. Period. It's going to be the case every time. So get used to it. Um, it's never reported that way because that's not how we measure it. Kelvin is a calculated temperature scale. So the R constant is always the same. That would always be a given. Your volume and your pressure were given. So all it takes is a relatively small number of moles of nitrogen to fill that airbag. And that's important because, again, dealing with solids, dealing with solutions, we're not generally in the mindset of saying, okay, one mole takes up liters and liters of space. An ideal gas, one mole of an ideal gas at STP takes up 22.4 liters. It is massive, the volume involved here, compared to the number of moles. So, not really a surprise here once you get used to it, but at first it's like 1.7. That number seems awfully small. That's because gases take up a lot of volume relative to their mass. Okay, so then going across... The stoichiometry, there's two moles of NaN3 in that balanced equation for every three moles of nitrogen gas generated. Gives us a need, a need for 1.1 moles of sodium azide. And then we take the molar mass of sodium azide times that, and this is what we actually need in our device to fill up the 37, 36 liter airbag. Now, this is a, a stock problem from your book. Um, I have a different one in mind. So, Let's talk about it. We're going to use more reasonable data. Here's what it looks like. The driver's side airbag is about 65 liters. Average 60 to 70 liters, so we'll take the middle ground, 65 liter volume. And the gas is generated at 300 degrees C. One thing that you don't think about very much is that you know, this is hot when it forms. And the reaction that forms, it's very energetic. This is not coming out at room temperature. It will cool down, 
but if you actually were to have this gas blown in your face without the bag there, it would burn you to a crisp. So that's one misleading thing in the, in the stock question that we just looked at. Second, um, numbers differ here, but I will take one that I, I found in a couple of places, and that is you're taking about 130 grams of sodium azide. Now, if that's the case, what's the pressure? One thing missing here. So we still have our balanced equation, and we're going to still ignore the secondary reactions because we don't want to make this any more complex than we have to. Um, but first, if this were given to you not balanced, be careful. You cannot work with a balanced equation in any context, ever. So make sure any chemical equation you're dealing with is balanced. So first, we need moles of NaN3. So we have 130.0 grams of that. It is 65.0 grams per mole. Uh, not intentional, but works out nicely here. I, I would like to claim I meant to do that. I didn't. Um, so we have two moles of NaN3. Now we need moles of this for the gas law because the gas law is about the moles of gas present, not the moles of the starting material that was not a gas to begin with. So we're going to have to convert that using the 3 to 2 ratio. So we have 3 moles of N2 for every 2 moles of NaN3. So I get exactly 3.00 moles of nitrogen gas. So remember, we're talking about 300 degrees C, 65 liter airbag. So my pressure is this. So I have three moles. I have the gas constant. 08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. I have at generation 573 Kelvin. Now we're going to go back and look at that in a moment. And a volume of 65.0 liters. Okay. So if I work this out, I get 2.1. 7 atmospheres. Now, that's assuming 300 degrees C and it's assuming something else is going to be problematic. Were you to impact with something of that pressure, you'd be better off hitting a brick wall at 70 miles an hour. It would hurt less. This clearly is not right. So, these are the real numbers, though. What's going on here? One, the temperature. 300 degrees C is the detonation temperature for sodium azide. So that's the temperature where it's generated at. It's an explosive reaction, so it is very exothermic. It's unlikely it's going to cool down during the reaction. It's more likely it's going to get hotter than that, but we need a temperature to focus on. We'll take that. The gas then is going to get blown out into the bag, and then as a result of that, it will start to cool down. So very likely that temperature is not going to be what you actually encounter at the edge of the bag. That's going to be what's happening at the edge of the detonator deep inside your steering wheel or your dash if you're the passenger. This is a driver's side airbag volume. So that's one. Two, even if we're talking about a pressure of only one atmosphere, a little bit over one atmosphere, which is just what the book's example used, it would still break you into tiny pieces if you were to hit that. How does an airbag actually work? It works by two very simple concepts. One, we inflate a balloon really fast, as right before you run into it, and it has vents in it so that as you hit it, the gas begins to get pushed out, but not complete, not too fast. If the gas went out without resistance, you'd still slam into the steering wheel. 
So it's the venting process of that gas that slows you down rather than letting you take the full brunt of two, point at, two, two atmospheres here or take the full brunt of the steering wheel. Somewhere in between where the airbag deflation is actually slowing you down before you hit anything else is why this technology actually works. It's why it keeps people alive. Now, you can imagine a couple of other things here. The example that the book gave you is probably more like a side airbag. It's too small to be one of the main airbags. Driver's side, again, as I said, averages between 65 and 70 liters. The passenger side, you're further away from the dash. So that means the passenger side has to be a bigger bag. The passenger side usually is more like 150 to 200 liters because it has to cover all that extra space that the driver's steering wheel is not in the way and still pad you out the same way. So it's an interesting topic and one that has a lot else going on, but it is a very simple direct application of the gas laws at its core and a little bit of engineering to kind of let so that gas out so that the bag doesn't kill you the way the steering wheel would have. Um, having had one accident with an airbag, I'll tell you, even with that technology, it still feels like you hit a brick wall, um, but you come out of it in one piece. You may get some bruising, as I had on my arms for a couple of days, um, and you may be sore, but um, clearly it works because my particular accident would likely not have left me in any position to speak, at least not unless I start believing in reincarnation. So it's a great technology and I personally like it very much. All right, so um, we'll pick up with other examples in the next video.